Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek. Today we're going to be going over a little bit more of the software program JCI Drawing so that you can get a good idea of what the program contains as we dive deeper and deeper throughout the year. So let's get started. So I'm going to jump over into the iPhone 13 Pro Max motherboard so we can take a look at it. What's nice about this particular type of page is it has all of the sides of the motherboard. And what's really cool is below the iPhone 13 Pro Max motherboard, you've got the back camera. Here's all of the back camera ribbons so that you can see where they connect. For example, these joints are soldered right here to these ones on this main flex along with the other one. And you can actually zoom down in on the connectors themselves so you can see the pins. And so when you had a failure in a camera, you can actually do some testing and determine whether or not you've got issues and if they're fixable with a new flex or fixing the original flex or if you have to replace the camera. Another cool one is the Wi-Fi IC. So if you go onto the main motherboard here, you can actually see at the top, it's got the Wi-Fi. And what's really nice about having the Wi-Fi is a lot of the time when you have a failure in a Wi-Fi, it's not actually the uh, the integrated circuit inside the wi the, the Wi-Fi IC that's gone bad, but it's typically a single capacitor, just like you'd have a short on a motherboard that's preventing the motherboard from, from turning on. Sometimes you actually have a short within the IC itself. And I used to do this all the time on some of the older models where instead of replacing the IC, I would simply isolate the area of the Wi-Fi IC that has gone bad and dig out that component. Literally dig into the IC, pop out the capacitor that's gone bad. And the nice thing is, is these components are surrounding the perimeter, at least most of the ones that go bad. Now that doesn't mean that that's always the solution, but uh, instead of having to go through the tedious process of replacing the Wi-Fi and everything that goes on with that, sometimes you can just find the capacitor that's gone bad, dig it out, and you're good to go as you, as I found that you don't really have to replace those capacitors. You could also take a look at the charge port area and determine if there's anything going wrong there. You can determine if you just need to solder on, for example, these pins break on the charge port all the time, causing an intermittent charge uh, where you'll get the, the, the charge port to work at specific angles. You can determine which, uh, um, which lines are broken with uh, using kind of this board view software with a, with a multimeter. And then a couple ones that I really enjoy as well is understanding the, uh, the for example, the infrared camera um, circuitry here to be able to determine what's gone wrong to see if it's fixable because you want to be able to save face ID. Or another thing that goes wrong a lot of the time is the front facing camera. And so you can actually rework those cameras and you have the assistance of all of these measurements, for example, on these pins and understanding what, go, what goes where so that you can get a camera working again. So all of that is really cool. And on top of that, one of the things that JC has going for them is all of the different tools that are integrated with this software. There's so many different tools that you can actually connect up to the computer that'll analyze the issues going on with the, the motherboard. For example, if you have a service related issue, there's uh, programmers basically that'll allow you to hook up wires. For example, if I go here, you have all of these test points along the back of the, 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 the back side of the motherboard. And you can, for example, you can select here under the signal, you can click on these different SDRs. And for example, if I wanna know where the the different lines to connect to are, I can click here on the SDA, SDA1, for example, and it shows me this test point here that I could connect to. This one as well, one for the uh, SCL, and the to get the 1V8 uh, line in for power to test that one, here is where you would connect to, and that would be able to test this circuit. And you can see all of the different service lines here that you can go through and perform that test using this software hooked up with that programmer. It'll actually tell the, it'll actually provide the feedback to the computer and it'll help you isolate uh, the problematic area, which will help you diagnose further the issues with the service, for example. 
as these motherboards get more and more complicated and as things become more and more paired to the motherboard, it is becoming more essential for this type of education to be readily available. And so that's why I'd like, that's why I'm doing this. I want to start the, the journey for those of you that are looking at the future and saying, I still want to be a tech in five years. Where do I need to be going to be, to have that as, as your security. And I think that learning these things where, where it goes to the advanced type of repair, motherboard repair, refurbishing, and understanding everything that goes on behind the scenes of just the simple, I can swap out a screen battery charge port and make some money, but I can actually get to the devices that need a little bit more brain power than that. So being able to engage with this type of learning is something that I really think that a lot of people benefit from. And a lot of this comes down to simply understanding where do you start looking depending on the type of issue that you're having. For example, let's say I have a phone that when I plug it into power, like when we have it on a charger, it's not booting up, but the phone is actually getting physically hot. At that point, I know that it's either there's a short on one of the main power rails or there's water damage that's something's connected to one of those main power rails and you're getting heat because it's being introduced to the phone and all of the energy that should be going otherwise to charge the battery and boot up the phone is rushing to the short. Uh, if electricity has a way to ground, it will go there. That's its entire purpose in life is to dissipate itself into a ground plane. And in fact, that's how we make electronics work in, work in general is we give the electri electricity a path to ground. And along the way, we open and close doors so that it basically can carry a bunch of zeros and ones in a bunch of circles before some of it eventually dissipates into ground. That's why there is no way to have an electronic device that'll always stay powered on without a power source. And that's why the battery slowly drains over time is because you need that conversion of electricity finding its way to ground, carrying along with it the data in order to make it work and do the functions that we want it to do. Hence the battery draining, why we need to recharge it, and all of that circuit needs to work, otherwise the power is gonna automatically jump to the nearest ground source, and shorts allow for all of the electricity to go there. And most of the circuits aren't utilized unless you've activated them with the different switches that are in the circuits. And so if you have a device that isn't powering on and is getting hot, you know that the that the short is gonna be connected to one of the main power rails. So the first thing that I would do, for example, if I was working with a 13 Pro Max, is I would take out the motherboard and I would examine it, look for any signs of damage, corrosion. If I'm not able to locate something and I've determined that it's not water damage, then I know that it's a short on the motherboard. Given that it's a 13 Pro Max, you could start uh, by simply testing the battery connector. So what I would do is I take a multimeter and I'd come down to the battery connector here, put my multimeter in diode or continuity mode, put my red probe on ground, and I would put my brow, my black probe, my ground probe, on one of these uh, points. And what I would do is I'd be testing. I'd make sure that first I have a good signal to ground, just to make sure I've got a good, uh, that I've put my grounder in the right spot. Then I would test and see if I've got an open line on this pin. I would then test that I'm reading 0.49 on this one, 0.39 on this one, 0.55 on this one, and 0.52 plus or minus a, a small variance there, but I'd be looking to see if I get those values. And now if those values check out, then I would jump over to the main line. And what's really nice is I can come up here to the search bar, and if I type in VDD main, you can see everything that's connected there. And without splitting the boards, one of the things that I'd want to do is find an area that I could test, okay? Now I do have access to a few test points on the back of the motherboard, that I could test. Now let's say I haven't extracted the motherboard yet because I don't want to have to deal with the 5G antenna. I would want to find a component on the top of the board that I could test. Now if I look down here, all of this is covered by a shield. This is all covered by a shield. This is all covered by a shield, but I have a couple components, these capacitors for example, that are next to these connectors 
that would be most likely covered by first the little spongy sticker around the connectors, but also a little bit of underfill. But if I dig down further than that, I could take my multimeter and see if I've got a short on the main power rail. And if I do, then I know that I can start injecting power into the main power rail using something like a thermal camera to isolate the area that the heat is dissipating in. This probably means that I need to split the, the, the board. Not always, as you can tell on the very top, you've got a good portion of the components are connected to the to VDD main. But when you start getting in on to the lower, the, the bottom side of the top board, or even the bottom board, you've got a lot more components. You've got, I would say 70% of the, the components that are connected to VDD main are going to be hidden between the boards. So I'd be splitting the boards and testing whether or not the short is on the lower board or if the short was on the upper board. And from there, it's just a process, a process of elimination. And one of the quick ways to do it is using a thermal camera. And that's where something like this comes in handy because not only is it a multimeter, but it's also a thermal camera. This is the TB10 Pro handheld thermal imager. I'm still looking for a short on a motherboard. It's not something I come across every single day, but I definitely will be demoing one the moment I do. So make sure that you have the notifications on for that one. But at that point, when I'm isolated, which side of the, the, which if it's on the top or the bottom board, and then if it's on the top or the bottom of that one, I can actually isolate the component using thermal camera. There are other methods, free spray, alcohol. Uh, there are methods to use a multimeter to help really identify it. You can use, before I had access to a thermal camera, I would simply use my cheek. Uh, a sensitive area of the body where I could really start to really isolate the area of the motherboard where the heat was coming from. And the way to simply do that is a couple ways. You can connect up the power supply to, let's say I'm working on the top board, to the battery connector itself and try to inject voltage that way. Or I can take a my my probes, I can take my probes from a power supply and I can attach my ground probe to a ground plane of some kind. And then I could touch the data side, the red side of VDD main with the red probe with a small amount of voltage and I'd increase that voltage depending on if I'm seeing or not seeing anything. And what will happen is the component, most likely either an IC or a capacitor that's gone bad, will warm up. If it's a capacitor that's heating up, that's gonna be the issue. There's rarely anything more than a single capacitor that's gone bad although I have seen it before. Typically, if it, there's a short and there's no obvious reason for it, it's a capacitor. Could be something like a PMIC issue. It could be something else, but they're relatively easy to diagnose and fix once you've gotten to that point. Putting back the boards is another story. Depending on whether or not you're going the path of data recovery or full functionality, that's a whole nother part of this type of game that we play and having the right tools at that point comes in handy and knowledge. So I know we've just barely touched the surface or just a little bit more than last week. So hopefully you guys get a good sense of the direction that we're going with this. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If there's a specific video that you'd like to see me make, leave it down below as well. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.